Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Welcome back, preschool peeps. Hi, peeps. We have an actually around the world new country to welcome to our top listeners. And those are the people of Saudi Arabia. Yay. Hi, Saudi Arabia. It's so cool that this reaches so far. I don't even know what to say about that. This is like... Sometimes it really kind of, it it just, it boggles my mind sometimes that it is so worldwide and it, sometimes I think it's it's not true. (laughs) No, but it's so hard to picture like that there are people in Saudi Arabia listening to us. Yeah. We're glad that you're here. Please tell people. And also in the United States, uh, again, this is a state we feel like we have not shouted out, but we could be wrong. And that's Florida. Florida is in our top ratings this week. So welcome aboard Florida. Yeah, Florida. Yeah. We've been there. Yeah. <laughs> we <know Florida. laughs> Welcome. Uh, and again, tell your friends and neighbors to come on over and listen to us. Um, just, you know, two people trying to record something good about early childhood education and yeah. children. Tell them to we'll join try. join us. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we sure do. Uh, and, and we definitely, in the course of our careers, wouldn't want to be replaced by artificial intelligence, which is all the rage, as everyone knows, <laughs> everybody's talking about artificial intelligence. Uh, and uh, we came upon an article talking about some studies that they've done with preschoolers having to do with robots that I'm just going to let Allison describe. And you all, you all just think about <laughs> this. Go ahead, to, Allison. To read it, the like, little synopsis here. It says, preschoolers prefer to learn from a competent robot than an incompetent human. Researchers at the Cognition and Language Development Lab tested three and five-year-olds to see whether robots could be better teachers than people. Okay, so... Which right away gives me a Already. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, my head is hurting. <laughs> but, but you know, when you think about it, when you think about it, okay, when you think children who are using apps to learn things, yes, not so different. robots. And I have to say, when I read this, I was like, oh, this is why the children in my class don't listen to me because (laughs) they sometimes they really don't like, especially with things like, like if we're reading a book, like I've noticed this class, if I read a book, they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't really care. We're not going to listen. They're like all over the place. They're wandering. But then one time I was like, I'm going to find the same book on like, like Mm -hmm. on YouTube, you know, with somebody else. And it seriously is, it's somebody else, a teacher reading the same exact book and they were all perfectly quiet listening to the whole thing. And I'm like, because it was on a screen. So then I was like, maybe yeah. I should just record myself doing all this stuff, you know? And then they would get it. Cause I think they are so used to having an iPad with the little, the little apps that they can do and being able to push buttons maybe, or whatever it might be. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> They're used to technology. They're used to technology. everything being technology. So yeah. essentially in this experiment, right. They, they had a teacher and a robot. Yes. Am I right? They teacher, a and, teacher robot. and a robot. And hold on, let me find it. Because they... I don't want to misquote it, but like. I the think children they started with familiar objects. Zoom meetings. Well, yeah, it says the children participated in Zoom meetings featuring a video of a young woman and a small robot with humanoid characteristics. They were sitting side by side. Between them were familiar objects that the robot would label correctly while the human would label incorrectly, referring to a car as a book or a ball as a shoe or as a cup, a cup as a ball. So the children understand, the children understand that the robot is smart. That's yes. what they get from that. Because if yes. if the if the objects are things that children would recognize and the robot labels them correctly, what they understand without being able to express it maybe is that this robot is really smart although it does it is not a human right okay right but i wish that i said this before we recorded i wish they also flipped it so that the teacher was always making the right but words. the purpose of the experiment was mm-hmm. to see if the preference is human interaction or correct answers 
right? I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like but that's what says, we have here. We have human interaction versus correct answers. Right, but isn't that okay? So <laughs> all right, I, then I'm it just, says I know, yeah. I know. I just like, wow, how sad they don't want human interaction. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next, the two groups of children were presented with unfamiliar items like the top of a turkey baster, a roll of twine, a silicone muffin container. Both the robot and the human use different nonsense terms for these objects like Mito or Toma or, you know, different words that aren't words. They're just made up. They labeled the objects with these made up words. The children were then asked what the object was called, endorsing either the label offered by the robot or by the human. When the three-year-olds showed no preference for one word over the other, but the five-year-olds were much more likely to state the term provided by the robot than the human. So the three-year-olds don't really care if you're right or whatever. They don't care. The five-year-olds want the right answer. I think this actually says a lot about our educational systems. The five-year-olds right. prefer the right answer. They don't care where it comes from. It can come from technology. They don't care. They need to know the right answer. Right. Because they, so they kept saying, even though the words were nonsense, when they were asked which word is right, they would pick the robot word because they had learned that the robot is right the robot. in the first oh, phase right. of the experiment. The yeah. But yeah. it makes sense that a five-year-old who has learned the robot is right when asked, what is that would go with what they perceive to be the right answer, which would be the robot's right. answer. Right. I mean, They're that kind of makes like, sense to me that that's, that's a five-year-old's ability to apply right? logic. Yeah. Because if the robot so, was like a hundred percent correct in the first phase of the experiment, then the odds are he's going to be correct in the second phase too. So I may as well put all my money on that. Right. Cause like, <laughs> But the, why, why logic, would I go wrong? Right? I think that's yeah. I think that's logic. I don't think that it yeah. necessarily speaks to what a child prefers in their life. I know these children love technology. I'm not saying that yeah. they don't, but yeah. I think in this experiment, what we're proving is not so much that five year olds prefer uh, being correct over human interaction. It's that five year olds can discern correctness over what's probably yeah. not true which actually is not a terrible thing it's when you terrible. think about yeah right when you think about five-year-olds being able to go okay this is likely true and this is likely not true right. it shows how their logic is developing which is a good thing yeah that's a good so i'm thing not though. sure yeah i'm not sure that the conclusion of this experiment that children prefer like being like, correct over, or the robot's correctness yeah. over human interaction. I'm not yeah, so sure I agree with the conclusion. I don't, yeah, I didn't really agree with the conclusion either. I also think it was like there's so much more to this than just sitting children in front of a screen with a humanoid robot and a teacher, you know, because even, even in this experiment, the teacher's on Zoom. You know, it's not like they're actually yeah. interacting with a person who's in the room. That might have changed the whole thing. Like if you had, okay, we're going to be all in person and the person's going to be right there with you, interacting with you, individualizing things with you maybe or whatever versus the robot. That might change it. I think putting a human on Zoom kind of makes them a little robotic too, right? I mean, it's... But I mean, when I think about like the three-year-olds, it said the three-year-olds had no preference, right? They didn't yeah, lean no one way or the other. Even, yeah. Um, and that has to do with their inability to do that kind of linear logical thinking where yeah. if the robot was right last time, the robot is right this time. So the robot must have the right answer. That's linear right. thinking. Right. That's yeah. kind of, it's kind of abstract and, and more of an executive function thinking than a three-year-old can typically do. I think what right. we're seeing here actually is typical development. Um, but, but also, also this, I'm just going to throw the, this uh, kind of, uh, I'm going to throw, look, Allison's face on YouTube. I'm like, like, oh, oh no, no, she's going to say it. it should be replaced like, by robots. <laughs> no, uh, what okay. I'm saying is this, 
you know, I think about when I've taken a flight, for example, when I've been on an airplane and instead of talking with the adults with them, all the children are sitting there with tablets. And I, I guess yes, my true. question is, do they prefer on that flight to speak with the adults or do they prefer what's entertaining them on the tablet or do they not even know because the tablet is just handed to them? Yes. That's what I think. The tablet might just be handed. This is, and then it becomes, this is what I do on a flight. It's not right. a matter. Of, this is what I do on a flight. This is what I do in the car. This is what I do. My mom or dad hands me the iPad. This is what I do in the car. And it becomes like linked, you know, instead of like when I was a kid, there were no iPads. Okay. So when we were in the car, it was like, Hey, let's count how many red cars we see. Okay. Let's find different license plates. And we, but it, and, it made us talk. That's what we did in the car. That's what was normal for us in the car. Now it's like, no, here you go. Or, or all those really big SUVs that have the, the movie screens in them, the DVD. That came out a long time ago. That came out I know. a long time ago. But I have yeah. to tell you that I, 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 as a parent, I really resisted that because I liked the time talking in the I car. I like the time. So yeah. our, like we had a minivan that did not have that. And, and yeah. And, and, you know, my kids were very upset about that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know the, if there's a, I don't know. I think we have to, I know, how about this? I know that the human brain is wired for connection. And it makes yeah. me wonder as the human interaction decreases because of the world we live in and, and all the technology we have, yeah. as that human interaction decreases and as children now grow up understanding that artificial intelligence has the right answer, <laughs> what what is going to happen to that? How is it going to impact their behavior? The fact that they're not connecting with humans as, as much because children today are going to grow up knowing artificial intelligence has the right answer. It may oh, not yeah, have emotions, right? Right. It does. It doesn't. It, does. it, it cannot express humans' emotions in the same way that humans can. And it cannot connect with people in the same way that humans can. But artificial intelligence, more often than not, has the right answer. Yeah. And I wonder I think... if this has to change the way that we approach education. It's changing the way that we approach college education. People are talking that. about. Oh, yeah. People are talking about all that artificial intelligence that will write papers for students now and write discussion posts for students. And the fact that our prompts oh. for students now have to include some sort of self-reflection uh, okay. because the artificial intelligence can't do that. So in, if like, let's say instead of saying to students, you know, here's an educational theory, now discuss it in your paper. It has right. to be like now connect it to your childhood you, or children yeah. or things you've observed. It has to be about, oh, think about your own childhood because yeah. the artificial intelligence can't do that, but it can thoroughly describe the yeah. theory and yeah. how it's applied. Oh, wow. It's not stuff so, I even thought of because I'm so old, but like, yeah, tell you, it's a big thing and it has been for a little while now. So, yeah. uh, you know, we, when you teach adults, you have to think about how do I assess uh, understanding in a way that artificial intelligence can't do. And I think that that's going to push down high school, yeah. middle school, elementary school, and eventually preschool. How do we work with children in a way that human interaction is required? Yes. And because the robots and the artificial intelligence can't do that. But the children need connection. They need connection. Yeah. I mean, look at what went on, you know, when we couldn't connect with them, when there were lockdowns and things, when you can't connect with them. Right. A, there was a lot that didn't happen for them in their development. Yes, that's true. Because so much of you that know, development is interaction based. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's just not the same. I don't care if, if the program on your tablet can teach them things about the alphabet. It's just not the same. Right. As as sitting with a human being and having right. that important uh, aspect of the social interaction, the interacting yeah. with the adults and with their yeah. classmates. And that's all important yeah. parts of learning socialization. Yeah. And we oh, want absolutely. them to be able to function in a workplace someday. 
Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> foundation, the foundation for that is laid in the early childhood years. Yes. Yeah. Interesting about that experiment, though, is that the five-year-olds understood the importance of being right. I want to go back right. to that. Yeah. Like they understood something about our society and the value that it places on being right. You can't be right 100% of the time. How do we teach children that it's okay to not be right, to right. be vulnerable, it's to try and have to try again? Yeah. And I think that's, that's a really valid point is like, I think for a lot of students, they get very upset if they are if they have given the wrong answer you know and it's like no but that's part of learning making mistakes is part of learning you know so like yeah, yeah how do we how do we teach them that you know like for me i just always model like i spilled milk all over the lunch table today they're like miss allison you're an adult somebody said that to me like yeah adults spill stuff all the time you know how many times yeah. i spill my hot tea in my house a lot you know it's like I, just because i'm an adult doesn't mean i don't make mistakes you know and they're like oh like, but I, I was I actually surprised that anybody even mentioned it to me, <laughs> you know, but like, yeah, I think you need to, you need to teach children that it's okay to be wrong. It is okay to make mistakes. That is how you yeah. learn. You know, it's also part of just being a human being. We are not robots. We are not perfect, you know, and that's part of being a human and that's okay. Do you ever see the movie? It just reminds me all this talk about robots. It was a Robin Williams movie called Bicentennial Man. You ever see it? No, I've never seen that. Okay, go back. I don't know where on some streaming service and find it. Okay. It yeah. was it was about and folks, you can write to me and tell me if I'm not remembering this correctly. <laughs> um, but it was Robin Williams played a robot, and it was about the future. You know, at the time that this was filmed, which was a long time mm. ago, it was yeah. about the future in a world where families had robots that were their um, domestic help, right? Where okay, everybody yeah. like this family had a robot and um, they loved this robot. And the robot wanted, Robin Williams as the robot, wanted human emotions and spent a lifetime trying to get the human emotions to become a part oh, wow. of being a robot. And mm. I'm not even gonna tell you what happens, but it it just reminds me of this, that, that need yeah. To connect on that emotional level and now everybody go back and find that movie if you haven't seen it <laughs> bicentennial man yeah it's not like I, I think it's not perhaps the greatest movie robin williams ever did but it has a really yeah. deep message that i think applies to this and to today about the importance yeah. of emotion and what the robot was willing to give up to have human yeah. feelings um yeah. So anyway, go find it. Just do, I'm not even <laughs> going to tell you. Just go find it. Bicentennial Man. I, you know, I, I understand. I understand that uh, robotic things are can be wonderful. Think about surgeries that they do now with yes. robotics. Um, yeah. I understand that all this can be great, but still, still, children need to know that we're that it's okay to be wrong and that we're here yeah. to connect with them. And that, that three-year-old's lack of preference really should remain in some way. Like, yeah. I don't know, it shouldn't suddenly switch over and go, all right, I just want to be right. Yeah. But also yeah. like, what's wrong with society that they put such a, an emphasis on being right all the time? Well, you know, I think right. we've talked about that a lot. I know. A before um, on this podcast. It's still one of my things. But yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Me too. Yeah. Me too. There shouldn't be such an emphasis on being right. There should be an emphasis yeah. on trying. But, yes. you know, so be yeah. it. Yeah. And so a be. lack, you know, less conformity and more uniqueness should be valued. I, I hope that if you're listening to us, you're going to go back and you're going to teach families about the importance of human interaction. And that it's yeah. okay if their children aren't right all the time. I hope they know that. And that the human interaction really, really matters. And now yeah. go watch Bicentennial Man and let me know what you think. <laughs> so let me know what you think. You can go to our website, howpreschoolteachersdoit.com. Go to the contact form and send us a contact form letting us know what you think. Yeah. Yeah. Love to hear from okay, our peeps. folks. We yeah. do. We love to hear from you. Um, and where we will be here again 
next week. So you'll be hearing from us. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, peeps. Bye, peeps. Thank you.